Oh, hey Bones, how's it going? You ready for this? I'm I'm down, dude. Let's do it. How you doing, birds? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Let's re- let's record this thing. Swain? Is uh Swain asleep? Oh, I think he fell asleep. I, he's got to be asleep. Swain, you there? Buddy? Um, I'm not asleep. I mean Oh. Oh, okay. Cool. Let's All right. uh All right. kick it off. Let's get started. That was a long pause there, Swain. It seemed like we, we like just might have sort of thought, there. yeah. No, nah, man, I, I I have Trinity Ghoul. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The exotic bow. Sure. Yeah. Let's, we can talk about it. Yeah. Still the intro. Go ahead and kick off the show, though. I, no, nah, I played Gambit yesterday. It was fun. What? what? Is he? Is he? Is this, is this, is this like a, a is he sleep? Oh, God. Sleepy Swain is sleep talking. <laughs> He's sleep podcasting. Oh, no. <laughs> well, might as well start the show. Yep, Nothing to hear about it. Here we go. And then I was like, yeah, the bounties, you got to finish them first, and then you do the Dreaming City. Oh, right you are, Swain, and yep. good points to Welcome to, to the show. About, uh, just what, to be clear, we were not having a conversation during the music. Uh, <laughs> we just said time to start the show, and then that happened. Okay. Yep. But we're all uh, here, uh, Swain, Birds, and Bones. We're at Crucible Radio, the podcast for all things Destiny PvP, and we've got plenty of stuff to talk about and a kick-ass guest later on, one of our buddies. I'm not actually asleep. I'm just really sick and really tired. So, Wait, a little bit oh. of both. Wait, I, is this still like? Is, is this still a, sleepwalking? Uh, no, <laughs> is, I'm is actually. That sleep, I'm actually. This is Swain. Hi, it's me. Oh, oh, oh! Thank God, okay. Swain. I'm awake. Swain, you're back. <laughs> We were talking to Sleepy Swain, and he's he is off topic. Yeah, <laughs> he is, he's super scatterbrained. Does not keep it type. I mean, it's good commentary, but just uh, and hey, look, worse things have been done while people are sleepwalking slap, slash sleep sleep talking. But being scatterbrained is no good for a podcast. <laughs> I think the argument can be made that I've been sleep podcasting for 172 episodes. <laughs> Yeah, no, no reason to change it up now. Like, uh, like I'm actually really knowledgeable about this game. Uh, I just don't come across that way because I'm pretty much half asleep for every single one. All of our <sighs> listeners, when you first said that, just sort of nodded to themselves, like, "Yeah, yes. checks out." Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, we were watching the YouTube video. Uh, it was uh, Michael oh, the B. Jordan YouTube video. <laughs> Yeah, we're watching the old YouTube video. <laughs> Went to YouTube. Put, in, put it into our VHS player. The, <laughs> uh-huh, Hit yeah. the play button. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the the video we've all seen. It was uh, Michael B. Jordan talking about his daily routine, and he doesn't get a lot of sleep. But he did describe, uh, yeah, you know, I usually from like six to seven. That's when I shower and meditate. You know, I like to like to meditate in the shower. Or I'll just sit down and meditate in the shower sleep for a little bit and I thought holy shit Swain and Michael B. Jordan have the same training program this is <laughs> it's amazing I'm pretty much the same person uh, I actually got two nights of sleep earlier in the week and booked like seven weeks of uh, guests yeah, on yeah, our show did. <laughs> uh, so you guys have that to look forward to uh, today we have Joey and oh, what a next lineup. week is uh, oh, just a, a little small streamer, Dr. Lupo. Yeah, one of our discoveries, actually. You know, we sort of found some talent <laughs> that no one was really watching. and We, we made you, kid. <laughs> we put him at the top of the directory of anything <laughs> yep. he wants to play at any given time. <laughs> yep. So we'll be accepting our our thanks and gratitude tomorrow. <laughs> or I'll next accept week. mine in cheese. Uh, what? A, what che- string cheese? Yeah, string cheese. Okay. Um, watch my you might as well go down the list. Let's get this hype going. Who's after Lupo? I don't have the Destiny list. Dad himself, Mr. True Vanguard. Oh. Pop. After that, you heard him. God, must have been about a month or two ago. And uh, I think he was a real surprise. He blew our minds repeatedly in his casual, well thought out, uh, goal oriented way. The one and only Special K dude is going to tell us what we've been sleeping on. 
And after that is my favorite daily YouTuber, Cammy Cakes. <laughs> Cammy, uh, Cammy let the wolf out of the cage a little bit there recently. <laughs> so, <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, and then, and then, long overdue. This one's been a long time in the making, getting it, getting it going. Uh, Bonzi, good buddy of yours, Mister Kensta, joining us, the one and only. I actually played like eight hours of Gambit with Kensta the other day to get the meatball <laughs> to spawn. It was, it was actually a blast. I had a great time, so I'm looking forward yeah. to having him on the show. Yeah, Kensta was on my team for about fifty percent of my comp points on my grind for uh, Claymore. So uh, he's a great guy to play with, and I'm looking forward to that. And after that, on November 19th, Mr. M. Tashed. Ooh, Yet you know another him. career we planned and plotted <laughs> carefully. <laughs> we are truly puppet masters and have been pulling the strings for a long time. But uh, I will point out, because this, uh, this continues to blow my mind, Uh I believe M. Tashed was one of our very first guests on Crucible Radio. Not not the first. But episode I three. Episode three. Yeah. Second ever guest we have we ever had on the show. I remember what him talking ride, about uh, like Praetith's Revenge. <laughs> I, I literally remember him saying like that gun should not exist based on its base stats and how how you know stable it was. Like I just remember that conversation like it was yesterday for some reason. But it'd be good to have him back. And then after that, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Go to go to twitter.com slash crucible radio and click the pinned image. Maybe uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. No. Yeah, uh, I'll give it away. The special guest after that is Kermit the Frog. He's uh he's got a he's got a bone to pick about Claymore and broadsword because he loves pulse rifles. He's gonna, uh, he's fun. gonna go off. <laughs> Did he miss out on uh on Redrix? Last season, yeah. and now he's got to do the broadsword quest. Yeah, he was on vacation, so he couldn't grind comp, and now he's really annoyed. So mm. we're going to just let him take the mic and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> uh, fun Kermit fact, uh, we totally made his career as well. <laughs> we were there from the beginning. Fun Kermit fact, our friend Dan thinks he's a teen. <laughs> uh, Which is wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, Kermit ain't no teen. Oh, Kermit's an adult frog. He's got a son. Speaking of guests, uh, did you guys listen to the lore last week? Yes. <laughs> um, I <laughs> have a bit of a backlog. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Screw you guys. Uh, last week was awesome. I got to interview Mylan Games and do PvP. Uh, oh, lore for PvP dummies like yourselves and uh if you enjoyed it uh at me on twitter let me know what you would like to hear next because uh we'll just do some really small segments for future episodes mm. just put i started in. it hey. but then i heard fallout's voice and i vomited so i had to pause it so i that's, haven't gone back that's fair it's completely Wait, can fair. I go ahead and take credit for Fallout's career as well? <laughs> <laughs> who, who in this Destiny world have we not catapulted into fame? Uh, mm -hmm. Bungie, Deej, Bungie, Destiny, you're welcome. <laughs> First ever uh, Crucible Radio guest. He was uh, he was still playing Tetris back then, <laughs> but uh, we shot him into the limelight. We are pulling strings. Uh, let's uh, let's actually talk about Destiny and not uh, delusional uh, fantasies of grandeur. Um, Bonesy, you, uh, you got yourself a Luna. Yes, I did. Boy, is it tough to pick, uh, pick a shader for that gun. It's, it's cool. But yeah, 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 I did. I'm feeling really good about it. Not that it's, you know, the pinnacle of accomplishment in the PVP world at the moment, but just the fact that it, uh, is a goal to hit and one of the few, you know, really you know, prestigious goals, so to speak, and that I did it uh, in relatively efficient manner. And uh, a lot of it solo, which was my own poor decision to do it, uh, had a bone to pick with myself, I guess. Uh, but it feels good. <laughs> the gun is great. And um down to talk about it because I've been, yeah, I've played a lot of comp in the last couple of weeks, a lot. How do you feel the comp experiences changed from last season? I got to say that overall, like overall, after weighing any pros and cons that I'll have in my head or whatever, 
obviously so much better. Uh, it's fun. It's a mostly high adrenaline playlist. Uh, every time I went in, I was trying to play, you know, really hard, really focused. My, my heart rate was increased. It was kind of that feeling I would get from rumble back in the day. And it's now just like every comp game. Uh, the modes are great. I think the addition of four man clash and control is fantastic for the mode. A lot of people, they can't, they can't wrap their brains around the differences between objective game modes and on non objective game modes, but you know, objective doesn't, inherently mean competitive. Uh, So I think they both feel great, especially uh, the fact that they sort of increase the the speed of of any average game of comp. Uh, For that reason, Countdown feels a little slow. It feels like it's it kills your momentum. And especially if you're trying to like push through one of these quest steps, it's like, well, all right, I'm not getting anything done in this in this mode. I don't think that there's a you know, I don't dislike the concept of countdown. It's just, I don't know. In the new, in the new weapons economy, in, uh, in the mode, in the, the playlist, it's a little off. But overall, yeah, I, I, I find it to be so much better, including the, uh, the point system and the point grind, for sure. How are you liking Lunas Howell? You know what? I did not think I would like it at all, and I love it. It's certainly a, a, a skill weapon, When you hit those shots, it's beautiful. It truly melts. Uh, But it's a 180 hand cannon, which I do not have a ton of experience with. I never felt like I was ever going to bother in year one when they started to show up. You know, they're just, ah, they don't feel right. They're a little clunky. There's such slow reload on so many of them. But Luna has amazing stability, really high reload. So it feels good even without any mods or anything like that. And, uh, you know, you can throw on target acquisition, sticky, or you can throw on backup mag, which I know a lot of people do. So you can get 13 in the mag. And based on the perks, those two headshots with the bonus bullet, uh, three bullet, three extra bullets is an entire kill. So that's a, a really good option for the gun. But yeah, I didn't think I would like 180s. And first game, I was like, actually, this feels great. It feels fun. And uh, and the perk is, uh, I think, I think it better than claymore just just from a objective view because it's gonna happen if your shots are on in that first fight and and claymore has that feeling where you're like oh it's a little slow i can't just you know melt someone in a 1v1 and get my perk active you kind of have to work uh to get that perk going and then it'll go nuts but yeah objectively it's very good um it feels great and the the main thing i'm struggling with is remembering that I now have a hand cannon in my second slot and a sniper or shotgun in my first. And I have to do the opposite when switching weapons after using base of basically ace of spades and a shotgun for 220 or 200 and 200 2,200 comp points. So my loadout has flipped and that's throwing me off a bit, but yeah, great gun. I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy. I have it. And I think I could get to legend by the end of the season. Why not? Yeah, go for it. Um, I'm sure you will have a really smooth trip there, and I won't hear <laughs> any complaining yeah, uh, um, along the way. No, nothing about the matchmaking at all. That bothers me at all. But uh, I did want to do, uh, before we sh- shift topics, a, f- a few PSAs about this grind. Uh, if Listeners, if you still want it, if you're still going for it, uh, a couple of things to, to point out, and I see a lot of questions about this on the internet, and I know it kind of got addressed somewhere buried down in some patch notes or something. But uh, one, the glory points will remember your max. So if you hit 2100 before you're done with the hand cannon headshots, or maybe you're even still on the solar kills, don't worry. Uh, it's actually kind of nice because it takes the pressure off of winning and you just go for the kills. You'll get your your Luna from there. Uh, so that's that's nice to know that it's, it's going to remember if you hit that maximum rank. The other thing is that this was kind of addressed and how it kind of sucks that like you got to do a quest and it's in your inventory as a quest. So you can't just switch characters and just play what feels comfortable if you're a guy like me who has a different favorite every other week. But that being said, there is a different quest for Not Forgotten and it becomes available in uh, at Shacks with your other characters so I got Luna on my Warlock, and I was like, I'm a little tired of playing on my Warlock. Uh, and I got to get 
Luna kills now on something, so I'll probably just do that on my Warlock. But for just those glory points where you have to try to hit Legend, you can do that on any uh, character. Like it won't, you know, it's just your your character, your uh, account rank. But if you want to do the Luna kills on another class, just go pick up that quest because it's different and new. So a little PSA. Now right. stop posting on the playbook about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, give it another uh, month or two. When you start getting, <laughs> do you think? Do you think there's still time? <laughs> Is there still time? Yeah. Ugh, I'll, that'll be me. I'll put myself through the same bullshit as I did last season, doing Claymore at the last weekend possible. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, speaking of uh, uh, playlists, uh, we had not really gotten a chance to play it uh, last time, but we did have a week of Breakthrough. Um, I know I played a fair amount of it. Uh, did you guys get into Breakthrough at all? I did the, the first uh, demo playlist version of it, and I only played on the new uh, Dreaming City map, which is a cool map. I think it looks really nice. It, you know, put anything in the Dreaming City. Uh, the mode felt fun. I know there's a bit of a weirdness with the... Uh, I guess lack of clock, you know, you sort of like run out the clock if you're really dominating a team. I have not had that happen uh, to me or against anyone else, but as a mode conceptually, yeah, it's fun. What do you think, Birds? I liked it. Um, like my my first impression was like, holy fuck, this is really good. Um, I I think it's it's gonna get some some tweaks. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that was strange to me was that um, you know coming in solo queue. Um, there was times where like my lobby would just dominate and there were a lot of other times where we decisively cap that first point, but just would not be able to seal the deal there. And it's just, I think the fact that people don't have that, that, that don't, don't, don't trickle knowledge yet. Like you're, if you die, you're going to be running all the way back from spawn. Um, you're the defending team has got the advantage there and that they're going to be more grouped up a little, a little bit better positioned. Um, and so you really want to stick with your team. You want to control the power, get the power, and then push together and um, get on the point quick and really be prepared to over push, you know, push past the point and um, make sure you've got someone who can sort of sit in back and, uh, and start the capture. It felt weird to cap that first point, not cap the second point and then lose because of that. That felt like, I don't know, give me like half a point or something. Don't give me give me partial credit. I mean, we did well so far, and then we just had a standoff. I mean, like, that's did better than they did. Those guys suck. They couldn't even cap that first point. And it felt like there were situations where uh, we go up against enemy teams where they would let us cap that first point. You know, maybe they'd play for power. But it felt like they were giving us the first point because um, some of the maps um, – one of them, I, I forget what it is, um, but was like a uh, uh, the Tangled Shore map um, that felt, uh, it, it just was really hard to push uh, mm. that, that final point. Um, really easy to set up decisive sniper lanes and, and really lock it down. Um, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think as a rotating playlist, it, it's the right spot for it. It's not something that's got quite the staying power of something like Gambit, nor, nor should it. Um, I think they, they, they accomplished what they set out to do. They wanted to make um, an, an objective mode that had, um, had a push, a push and pull to it. Um, I just need all of the blueberries out there to go play Overwatch long enough to know <laughs> that if you're running in by yourself, at the, you're not, that's, that doesn't help. That, that doesn't that doesn't help. Wait for your teammates. Just wait. It's fine. You just wait or set up for power. Like, there is a uh, a pretty amazing thing that happens in the comp playlist. Just to bounce back to that, that I find really funny, which is that all you very high skill slayers out there are kind of bad at control. The basic mode of destiny that's always um, been there. Bonesy, I'm I'm gonna Ugh. say this in the nicest way I can. I have silently had that thought in my head about you <laughs> from time to time. Oh, that like, I'm bad at control. Well, just that um, I know oh, you, you don't like standing on the point. <laughs> you, you don't like just standing there waiting, doing nothing. And I get it. You want to go slay, but even if you get a double before they get you, uh, I'm making you the bad guy. I know you know. It's know. it's also like the difference between playing it in quick play now and in uh, in comp and and there's there's just it's like comp is so so revolved around the power ammo 
And that's maybe something I don't love about it uh, because teams can certainly run away with power ammo in both the, the round based modes and just the clash control. But it's kind of like, it's kind of staggering in that sense, in that 4v4 competitive sense, how often people will leave a zone and, and, and push into groups by themselves when you're, when you don't have the two, one cap, like that's, that's all it is essentially. And I, and I'm, you know, halfway in the back, I'm capping a zone and in comp you do, you do trade zones pretty often. And it's like, okay, but if you wait like nine seconds, we'll have a zone and every kill you go get on that great push you're about to make will be worth double. And that's where I think a lot of people just like, can't, can't resist in quick play, you just kind of got to go throw yourself at some zones and cap and just get as many kills as possible because there's enough bodies on the field where you can still make a dent in the score. Uh, but when there's only four people up and they're often, you know, good enough to outduel you 50% of the time, there's a, there's a lot of bad pushes. In Clash, go nuts, but it, it just it gets highlighted more now that it's back in the comp playlist, back in that 4v4. Are you awake, Swain? What? Let's go with yes. <laughs> I, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah, you Swain, about I got a question for, for you. <laughs> Swain, I, uh, I, I unlocked a new Sunbreaker. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll tell you what, Hammer Toss Melee, that was fun. That was fun. You know, I like it. Uh, uh, with Dune Marchers on. And I'm glad you the, found the one part of that is fun. That's fun in <laughs> PvP. Uh, yeah. Here's the thing. Um, what is up with this Superman? <laughs> Am I doing it wrong? This, no, this thing is... No, you're not is... doing it wrong. It's just not meant for PvP, I don't think. Is it it's, meant for anything? It's good for Gambit. I, I guess if you're, if you're not like... invading. Uh, that's, yeah, right. You're using it to shred the primeval. You just spin... I, I don't is is there like a pacing to it where you just spin continuously? <laughs> no, I, I if you're using it to melt a primeval, you want to use the like uh, hammer slam and send a, a tornado, and you want to do it from like a decent way away. So like you have some space between you and the primeval. You're not getting stomped. You're still getting uh, the fire tornado going. I don't know, man. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's one of those things. I'm, I'm, I have not given up on, completely. Uh, it's got. There's definitely some loops in there that you could find that would be interesting, like building on to the extra damage that you can get. But I don't know, man. It's. I I really liked it in the blind well. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Makes sense. I will say that the hammer smash that sends out the wave of fire goes a lot farther than I ever expect on the rare occasions where I face oh. one. Like it, it will get you from a very long distance and that's kind of shocking and definitely has killed me a few times. I What's interesting is that it can go over certain obstacles. <laughs> like somebody did it on the other side of one of those cars in the alleyway and it just like went through the car, hit me on the other side. And I thought, <laughs> Sneaky. Okay. Okay. Maybe I should be doing that. Well, I think maybe. there's there's someone's gonna crack the code. It's just you know, That's and right. it may, maybe th- that doesn't mean it's gonna become it's, a uh, top tier meta those, subclass. It's a super though because that uh, it's tough because you're there's no mobility to it. There's no, there's no closing gaps between people with it. You can't like get close. You could barely even like pop it next to someone and and use it really well. Um, it doesn't doesn't travel all that well. So I don't know. I stick to using it for PVE sometimes for Gambit, but even then in Gambit, I like to invade. So I like to be able to use my super uh, mm-hmm. offensively in that situation. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that to Special K, dude. Let him find it. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of thinking of him when I mentioned that someone will crack the code. <laughs> it's possible. Speaking of cracking the code, uh, I was tipped off to something by a uh, dear friend of the show, the one and only Keen Koala. He got himself a Heart of Inmost Light Drop. This is uh, one of the new exotic uh, Titan chests. 
And if you're not familiar, uh, the, the perk on it is called Overflowing Light. Um, using an ability, grenade, melee, or barricade, empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have faster regen. Melees and grenades do more damage, and barricades have Cut more Cut to the points. chase, birds. Well, Keen figured out a little something-something, which is uh, as a titan, and specifically as a uh, bottom tree uh, sentinel, there's a loop. You pop your barricade, your like grenade. Instantly. You want to, as soon as you spawn and you have your barricade, pop it. Yep. Get that going. Now your grenade is empowered. Uh, and if you use a sticky grenade, uh, it is now a one shot kill. If you use a shield bash from there, your grenade is basically recharged. Uh, There's also some, you know, if you set yourself up appropriately, you won't even have to worry about that. You're, they'll charge each other as you use them. Uh, he also pointed out, and this was just 20 minutes ago, uh, he's been using Code of the Commander, which has the like little infecty thing. Um, and that as well can, can do, enough, uh, do enough action to get that, that recharge loop going. Yeah, it's just a lot of sticky grenades one-shotting people. Uh, good work on that one, Keen. I can't wait to get this thing that I don't have, so I have to take your word for it. I would like a new exotic. <laughs> you haven't gotten one, Bones? I have the Phoenix Protocol chess piece for the Well of Radiance, which is just like a, here, teammates, you have fun kind of super <laughs> for me right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a support class. I, I would like to be, and I don't know. I can't get the hang of that one. Yeah, that's the only new drop I've had, unfortunately. I've gotten Trinity Ghoul. And that's cool, I guess. That's a fun one. You know, I got around to using one that I kind of med a while back, and that is um, Cerberus. I was using that in control. Uh, this is the, like, four-barrel scatter auto rifle. Also, how crazy it is, is it that Birds has more new exotics than me and you, Bones? I know. It's just, go, it doesn't make sense. Figure. I I don't know what to tell you guys. It's fun, man. I it, I, I wouldn't... If I was trying to be a serious boy, I would put on a shotgun. I mean, a shotgun is going to get the kill up close. I find Cerberus works best uh, shooting shotgunners who are closing in on you um, or shooting people in the side when they don't see where you're coming from. Uh, I find there are a number of people who make both of those mistakes. Uh, the damage drop-off, I think both because of the, the drop-off and the the spread of it are pretty dramatic, um, but it is amazingly effective on people trying to close uh, on you. They really need to have a, a very nicely rolled shotgun to be able to compete at range uh, if you start shooting them before they're closing in. It's fun. It is it is definitely up close. Um, one thing that I figured out about it that I think kind of gives it a bit of a boost over a shotgun for casual play if you're with a, a team um, is that there's enough in the mag to get like a comfortable three kills out of it. I found myself reloading a lot and going, oh no, like I don't have to worry about the rate of fire. I don't have to worry about reloading. Um, it really, it really holds a bunch. I also got down with Chaperone. I played with Chaperone on two different nights. Uh, first night was just like amazing. I was playing Breakthrough. I got clips. I was like pleased with myself. <laughs> Second night, nothing. Nothing doing. Couldn't manage to get those headshots. Wasn't, you know, just, I, I think it was it was my fault. I wasn't doing something right. But um, yeah, if your aim is feeling on, Chaperone is, it's a treat, man. I I, I just, uh, somebody popped their golden gun and just like, yep, one quick headshot from way too far with Chaperone. <laughs> Does the trick. It's great. Apparently this first part is just birds lightning around. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. I took notes, guys. You got, yeah, you're getting all the gear. Yeah, well, you got stuff you know. to talk about because you're getting stuff. Also, like, I didn't have any time to do anything because I only played comp. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's fine, right? Like, yeah. I, Oh, I'm glad I, I did. I was strongly goal-oriented for a bit, but I'm trying to be more like casual bones now and just say, like, okay, this works well. Let me find something that doesn't feel right and see if it's any fun. Well, mm -hmm. screw you, birds. I'm going to have malfeasance before you. Yes, you absolutely <laughs> will. I guarantee it. Um 
But I also got around to unlocking the new Voidwalker. Got finally got my Warlock cracked open and played some of the new Voidwalker. And oh my god, this class is really fun. I really like it. Like I don't know if it's um if I'm the best at it or if it's the new meta, but that new super is just great because people don't know yet how to do like how much damage it takes to kill you and just like walking up to people charging do a blink and they're shooting oh they're shooting they think they're gonna get you and then you just uh you just explode and then they explode everybody explodes it's it's great i've actually started getting some good clips with that one and uh something i like i always want to do and think i'm about to pull it off and then misjudge it is like you know, bait a tether and actually get past it. And like the Nova warp is one where that's worked and it's, it feels really cool. Cause you can sort of float one way and they'll sort of aim that direction. And then very quickly uh, do two blinks. And I like the, the blinks aren't controlled by a heavy cooldown in between. You can do those three yeah. in quick succession and that makes it really strong. But I had this great play where, you know, tether I dodged and two hunters escaped over the gap on uh Emperor's respite, respite, whatever. And I caught up to them after as they were fleeing and was like, oh, hey guys, remember me? And then did the explosion. I was like, yes, that was cool. So it feels good to, to get a hang of those blinks and get really fast with it. Yeah, I, I'm impressed they found a third type of blink. Like there's the, <laughs> the classic Voidwalker blink, you know, D1 blink. There's the uh, Stormcaller zap, which is I think it was more of like a lateral blink, but still mm-hmm. very blinky. This one's like a little bit softer and looser, more like a, you know, Night Stalker puff of smoke than um, electric y zap zaps. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that's one I'm getting hang of. I need to I need to get that three timing down that you point out. That's a that's a good thing to shoot for. I'll also go ahead and say um, I got killed a whole bunch by Militia's Birthright today. That was fun. Uh, what this now? is. Yeah, so this is the uh, kinetic grenade launcher, the only kinetic grenade launcher. Oh yeah, um, that is the exclusive nightfall drop. Um, apparently, this is um, like I'm actually considering for the first time in my life grinding a nightfall because apparently this one um, is dropping a little bit faster than than some of the vanilla ones did. Um, but also, this is one of the fastest strikes to uh, speed run. So if you're listening to this and it's still Monday, you still got night. You can go do get it, like it. Six minutes. Uh, I actually uh, messaged a guy right after a, a game who was going off with it, and uh, he told me that his team was doing it in four minutes consistently. So, um, yeah, whatever that guy was doing. Yeah, I got a terrible drop on mine, so I'm probably going to end up back there before the weekend's over. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Rolls. Rolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah rolls. rolls. Uh, my favorite part, getting a cool gun and then having it suck. <laughs> oh, what can you do? Uh, what else? What else? What else can birds talk about? Oh, what, else, what, else, what else? What else? What else? What is this? Your stand up special? Uh, yeah. Hey, you guys hear about this one? You guys hear about guys, this? Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, no, I think that's all I got. Um, hey, oh, you guys, I, uh, you guys, no, I, I do have one more. Go Sorry. ahead. Okay. Um, I made a spreadsheet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, and I, I do this all the time just because um, it makes me feel better in this crazy mixed up world of ours. Um, but this one I actually did for a purpose. Um, I'm starting to look at my armor rolls and I'm starting to think, I'm starting to wonder, okay, which of these, what can I get rid of, basically? How do I know if something's a bad roll? Which means knowing what a good roll is. Um, and so I, I just made a spreadsheet that for each of the slots on each of the armor types, what perks you can roll there. Um, that second one, in case you haven't realized, has only got ammo finder reserves and scavenger in it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that special ammo finder is great. Um, but, uh, looking at those first perks, uh, I'll tell you something real interesting. You know, you can go, you can go to, go to your favorite website. You can look up the perks there, but you'll notice that there are enhanced versions of certain perks. So for example, I don't know, maybe our guest later is going to mention a sniper rifle uh, that he likes and a piece that's got enhanced sniper targeting on it. That's a helmet perk. There's both regular sniper targeting and enhanced sniper targeting. 
Um, there's new perks altogether. So on your class item, you can get absolution, which means when you pick up an orb, it boosts all of your abilities instead of just one. Uh, same thing with boots. Uh, I heard they're going to patch it, but distribution on boots is insane. If you use your class ability, it boosts all of your other cooldowns more than the perk dedicated to that particular cooldown. And I thought to myself, I want to get some of these good perks. Do I have these good perks? Well, what I found was these perks do not roll on all armor. Maybe this is common knowledge, but it wasn't for me. Uh, they only appear in three places. They appear on exotics they can roll. They appear on Reverie Dawn sets, which is the Dreaming City armor. They can roll those. Uh, and the Great Hunt raid sets. Uh, I might be mistaken. There might be somewhere else. But uh, I think if you're going for a truly meta armor set, I hope you like how the Dreaming City and uh, raid sets look. Because that's really where you're going to find all these enhanced perks and uh, and, uh, and and special perks. Um, yeah. I highlighted them on my spreadsheet. And I made a legend, even though I wrote the spreadsheet and put everything <laughs> is on it. Just to be uh, sure. Yeah, nice borders on everything. I'm quite proud of this one. Mm, what else? What else? What else? Uh, you guys uh, you guys hear about this? You guys hear about this one? Uh, we got a sponsor this week. It's Casper Mattresses. Oh, my God. I can't wait to go to sleep on my Casper Mattress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, good for you, Swain. And good for you listeners, because Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. They've got three mattress models. You got the original Casper, you got the Wave, and the Essential. And they're all perfectly designed to soothe and cradle your natural geometry. If you got some weird geometry, like me, it'll it'll cradle you. And not to mention the breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night. It's also delivered right to your door in a small, how do they do that sized box with free shipping and returns to the US and Canada. But the best part is that you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. 100 nights is a long time. And after all, yeah. you spend one third of your life sleeping, so you should be comfortable, okay? Here's the deal maybe you're a, you're a bird, just a, I was gonna say normal person, probably. <laughs> Probably not, not really. but just a uh, just a, a human of some kind. Guess what? Bird sleeps on a Casper. It's great. It makes him uh, able to continue being a normal person. Maybe you're <laughs> a bones type and you've got some geometry. Uh, well, guess what? Casper is going to cradle your natural geometry. And if you're a swain, um, like what's that? What's that? That Hulk line? That that's that's my secret. I'm always sleepy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, I I I don't. I dare not dream of a world in which uh, Swain is not getting his scant quality hours on a Casper mattress. That's not a world I want to live in. You can get fifty dollars towards select mattresses by visiting Casper.com/crucible and using Crucible at checkout. It's casper.com slash crucible. Offer code C-R-U-C-I-B-L-E for $50 off your mattress purchase. Terms and conditions apply. All right, boys. I think it's time. Uh, and right on time. Everyone's audio working perfectly. <laughs> Life is good. Another standard, smooth, flawless Crucible radio recording. <laughs> halfway under our belts. Spend two hours. Definitely not. Nope. Definitely didn't. Uh, I think it's time for us to talk to a guest. You've heard him on the show before. Uh, he's making his triumphant return. And we are going to talk to him in just a minute after a minute. Well, folks, yet again, here we are. Couldn't just do one week. Black Communion. Check them out. Blackcommunion.bandcamp.com. I am loving all the stuff you guys are sending in. We're going to be playing some great new music in the show in the coming weeks. But that doesn't mean we don't want to hear it all. So, hey, take what you got. It's great. It's great. It's great. Send us an email. Crucibleradio at gmail.com. Welcome back to the show, guys. Um, thank you so much for listening. 
We have a really special guest lineup for today. It's a great guy. He's a ELO farmer, staff farmer, all that jazz. And uh, let's introduce. Wait, wait, why? Why am I doing it? Where are the hosts? Yeah, hey, what's happening? You, you just say, you say me. <laughs> Normally we do this. Oh, oh, my bad. I, I just thought I would go ahead and you know start. So all right. Bold well, um, <laughs> <laughs> boldness is his middle name. It's his first name. It's his last name. Our guest, boldness, boldness, boldness. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> For coming on the show. It's Joey. Hi, Joey. Oh, <laughs> oh, AKA man. boldness, boldness, boldness. That was, that was the joke. You guys put me on the spot. I, I had to just, you know, I rolled with it. Oh, you did well. You did well. <laughs> this is, uh, I got to say, you know, when, when you're all hopping in, everyone's getting their audio figured out and everything just works perfectly the first time. I know. It's, it's just the so great. Best. It feels, it feels great being uh, <laughs> early to the show. It's the it's first time we yeah. actually started you know, on like consummate professionals over here. That's us. 180 <laughs> episodes in. No we're problem. Gonna have a, we're going to have deleted scenes of the Crucible radio <laughs> episode. That's going to happen. <laughs> Oh, who's that? Is that is that the radio calling? They want us to have a show. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, hi, Joey, aka Joverated. Uh, welcome to the show and to your very special interview. How's it going, man? Good. I'm glad to be back. Is um, this is what my my third time officially? We get to we get to three Pete. I'm in a special group of people now, right? Yeah, yeah. You you are. Well, last time we talked to you was at Guardian Con. We were. Uh, we were getting comfortable at uh, at the, the house party. What was it Destiny Festiny? What, what? I told uh, uh, I told my what, girlfriend what Alex you know? that you're going to be on the show tonight, and she said, "Joey, you mean the prom king of Guardian Con?" <laughs> 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 yep, the very one. Oh man, Destiny Festiny well, or whatever it was. All I remember was the alligator facts. Yeah, uh, alligator facts. <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> gator facts, <laughs> please. <laughs> um. I got some very blunt feedback on that segment from my sister, who's always <laughs> quite honest with me, Uh-oh. which is like, maybe you shouldn't have opened that episode with a 20-minute long inside <laughs> joke that would be confusing for people. And in hindsight, she makes a good point, but uh, we stand by our decision. That's like some- we'll Change it in a heartbeat, but stand by it now. It's too late. Yeah, whatever. I'm over it. Joey, what's been going on, man? How are you enjoying Forsaken? Uh, it's It's been a blast, man. Um, it feels, I don't know, I, I was like- editing some clips the other day and I just kind of <laughs> I realized like wait when did we 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 didn't have snipers and shotguns like for a year <laughs> what <laughs> what um it, it's been so much fun I've been running triple sniper just because I can you know and it's, it's so much fun and all the different yeah, capabilities are avail- that are available now I haven't having a blast uh, is triple sniper now? That's that's your official try hard loadout, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah maintain boldness, distance boldness, at all times. Boldness, 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 boldness. <laughs> Always be backpedaling. Um, yeah, but th- this is the first, not the first time, but um, one of the one of the recent times that, or one of the new times that the PVE has really like captured me too. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like this expansion has been the closest. To what I've wanted out of Destiny, it like it, it. You guys have all done the raid, I assume, right? I have. Um, it mm. feels done most of it. it. <laughs> <laughs> it feels super like a like a first person MMO. It's like it's the closest we've ever been to this kind of vast open world, like changing scenes and quests and dungeons and oh, it's it's been fun for me. I mm. really enjoyed it. So I mean, you. My man, were a trials streamer. How's uh, the withdrawals? You miss oh, it? I, I'm getting, I'm getting some withdrawals. You know that, um, <laughs> that Dave Chappelle meme where he's like scratching his arm or whatever. He's like, y'all, y'all got any more trials? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, there definitely is a gap, but I, I think it was a necessary one. Um, from what I've heard and talked to DMG and all those guys, that it, it seems like it needed to be done, you know, cause there needs to be kind of more, what's the word I'm looking for? More exclusive rewards, more kind of sought after rewards. Uh, it needs mm-hmm. to be a different, it needs the forsaken makeover. It, it needs, needs like, the, exactly. It needs the forsaken makeover and the forsake over. The forsake oh, over. <laughs> oh boy. I, I wish my brain wasn't like this. Birds your titan needs you know, a forsake over. That's it. That's, that's the one. Um, but yeah, I'm, it, it it did burn at first, but 
Um, I've kind of used the time to kind of like enjoy destiny as what it's supposed to be. You know, it's supposed to be fun and not just a trials grind every weekend. You know, I was, I was notorious for never doing PVE and I kind of had to this time. And it, <laughs> luckily it was the best PVE experience so far in my opinion. Yeah. I like that aspect of it. How, f- I mean, before Forsaken, like I, 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 I got one thing out of this game, right? Like I would play Mostly quick play. If Rumble was available, I would play Rumble. But if I was sitting down to Destiny, that meant playing PvP. Yeah. And it's kind of made um, generalists out of all of us. Like, I sit down and I literally don't know, I mean, should I grind out the powerful engrams? Should I Should I do some Dreaming City stuff? Am I playing Gambit tonight? Like, they're all... They're all fun, but I also feel like obligated and motivated to play all yeah, of them. Yeah, exactly. There's, strange. There's, a, there's a reason to play, you know? It's... It's awesome. Well, without trials, I mean, you still got to scratch that PvP itch. What's what's doing it for you now? Like, what 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 do people enjoy watching on stream? Um, I've I've been doing the the shenanigans, like the triple shotgun and triple sniper, just because that's. I mean, you can get some crazy clip worthy moments. You know, I I swear, I don't know what's going on, but Destiny's trying to make me a titan. Um, <laughs> it's really weird. I don't know what it is, but I got. First, I got the Furiosa, or what's what's the Ursa Furiosa? Those gauntlets, <clears throat> the right to bear gauntlets. arms. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh my god. Um, and then the uh, <laughs> if you don't know what they they're literally furry arms. Just so you know, listeners. Um, and then I got the one eyed mask, which is just stupid Ooh, in yeah. PVE. Um, Enjoy and, it while it lasts. And I got enhanced sniper rifle targeting. On my one-eyed mask, so Jeez. yeah. Come on, Joey. <laughs> uh, the game is testing me. Like here, Joey. Here's an wow. amazing, the best piece of armor in the game with your favorite role on it. Like here you go. <laughs> well, uh, l- let's talk about sniping. I mean, we've got a bevy of new snipers to choose from. We've got different roles in the mix. Um, I'm guessing you're probably using Bite of the Fox in that kinetic slot. Bite of the Fox. I'm uh, Iron Banner one. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be real with you. I have never heard that before. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, wrong. <laughs> Swing and <a> miss. <laughs> um, the one I've been using is uh, it's a little thing called the uh, supremacy. Probably haven't heard of it, but you know. <laughs> um, yeah, better. Answer. I got that thing from the raid and uh, got the advice from Mister Gamer Gamer Guy. He put <laughs> he put a targeting mod on his supremacy, and it is it is ridiculous that that thing doesn't leave enemies heads um yeah it's really fun <laughs> except i'm gonna if 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 you if there if you guys or if anybody out there has like a little bit of ocd the scope on on uh the supremacy like the reticle is a little bit to the left like i was actually ooh. noticing that it's, it's like the hockey it's ones just, from d1 it's just a little bit to the left and like once i noticed it i couldn't <laughs> not notice it and i almost had to put it away cuz i'm like this is this is awful what it is is like the the reticles in the middle but then the you know the circular scope and then the crosshairs are a little bit to the right so it <laughs> just looks a tiny bit off and it drives me crazy but it's still my favorite sniper so i'm still going to use it what are you using in the uh, in the other slots? Oh, I'm still using um, long walk, the trial sniper. That thing's really fun. Um, the slide shot perk on it's really nice for because when you you know you only get you only get two shots to start off with. So if you don't hit one of those two shots and get a brick, you're kind of screwed. Um, brick of ammo that is, and <clears throat> it's really nice because you can go you can essentially slide over a brick and then get a shot in the mag like while you're finishing the animation. Um, so that's pretty cool if you're like out of ammo for that sniper. And then the third one I'm using um, is Darcy. And I don't know if you guys have used Darcy in PvP, but it's it's kind of like a scout rifle sniper. And mm-hmm. it's got like zero um, stagger on it. And it's <laughs> like me and Rhythm were literally top fragging in every game we played running triple sniper. And it was <laughs> really fun. <laughs> Does it feel any different to you either since year one um, or, or compared to D1 in terms of like the physical 
feel of a sniper, either with like ready speed or flinch or anything like that? Like, has your approach changed or does it just sort of feel like, uh, you know, like it's always felt? Um, it, it feels relatively the same. Now that you mention it, I think it might, I think snipers might feel a little lighter. I don't know why. I think it's maybe some of them that were moved like long walk used to be a heavy. I think it had kind of low stagger, but I I'm, mm-hmm. don't quote me on that, but I think it might have a little more flinch now. I'm not sure, but for the most part, they feel the same. One thing I wanted to ask, um, I talked about it a little bit in the top of the show, or if uh, you're following the real world timeline, you'll know that I'm thinking I might do that at some point. (laughs) Um, But you mentioned kind of making that move over to Titan and really calling to you, but I'm curious to know what you think of the new Voidwalker subclass, because I've been playing it recently and I like it. (laughs) Yeah, it kind of, I'm just happy that Voidwalker has a good super now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, oh, poor Nova Bomb. Poor Nova Bomb. But yeah, I I am i haven't tweaked around too much with it. Um, I did the other day. I've seen all my friends like running Nova Warp and, you know, I um, have mentioned before that I'm notorious, notorious for using Blink and I love Blink. Um, so I did have to try it out and I will say that class is pretty ridiculous. Um, the, not only the super, which you have for, I don't know, like 30 seconds if you don't pop anything and then the radius of like a literal void explosion, which it should be, um, you get that, what's it called? Uh, what's the grenade called? The, um, handheld supernova, handheld supernova. That thing is glorious too and mm-hmm. you have like a mini devour on any grenade or super kill that you get so or melee because it's not the devour is continuous over time you have to keep getting kills but the it's like a, it's like life steal from destiny one um which makes that class pretty amazing so yeah my my two main classes are definitely the void walker one or the sorry the nova warp and then i don't know I want to, I want to say the Titan, the, the Arc one, just because it's so fun. I f- I feel like the the that new Arc Titan, the 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 missile subclass, it feels um I f- like there's days where I love it and there's days <laughs> when I don't. The super is fun, and if you pull the super off, it's delightful. But I feel like that that melee in PvP, the whole death from above. Um, you got to have real good aim with that. I feel like I've landed on top of people and then they've punched me and I went, <laughs> I just, I just like Koopa stomped you. How, do you how not, did I possibly lose Do you lose not like this? it? Or you just feel like it's inconsistent or? I, I've not had much luck with it. I find I'm leaving people absolute and getting cleaned up a lot. I literally just before the show got like a triple kill with that thing. <laughs> Oh, wow. So not to Very like... well may just be me. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's entirely possible I'm not doing it right. I, I was having a ton of fun with it. Um, it is... I'm, I'm still getting used to the targeting um, like aspects like when you're in midair because it's like... It's like fist or... What is it? Fist from above or... Um, death from above. Death from above. It's right? like death from above from Destiny 1, but it kind of feels like it locks onto people more. I don't know. It's... It's weird. I've only played it today, um, but that I, that that mechanic is pretty fun for me because you can slam the ground and then with the new sandbox changes, you can just one tap melee them after that. Um, so I literally just slam three people and then <laughs> melee them <laughs> once each. Well, I haven't played my Titan yet, but I mean, it's it stacks with Syntheseps. Right. Oh, really? And like a few other things because it's technically the melee ability. It's the melee. So I think people have just been, you know, decimating groups because of that uh that perk from Syntheseps and it yeah. procs because you're you're nearby people. But I, I really ah, like that about I didn't it. Even think about that. Yeah, I, I'd like that about it because it gives it, you know I, I like the ability to sort of tweak and make that ability what you want based on mm-hmm. the exotic and not just have this flat, you know melee melee option but uh it gives it gives your class a sort of customization option should you push toward towards that perk but yeah yeah for sure and um if if you did what um i just said and you like smash near like three people you're gonna get that 
bionic hand enhancements and then mm -hmm. one tap anybody else that comes near you. One thing I've been enjoying recently is the uh, the bonus arc damage from Dune Marchers, but I've not tried it in combination with that perk. I wonder if landing that melee plus that little bit of lightning damage is enough to uh, kind of bring it all together for a group. What does uh, what does Dune Marchers do again? Uh, Dune Marchers, you build up uh, linear actuators. Basically, yeah, you, you sprint for a little bit and then you get a perk. So on your next melee, it chains lightning to uh, nearby enemies. Mm -hmm. So like land in a crowd. I don't know. I'll have to try it out. No, yeah. I, I, wonder, it I wonder if you smash near one or two people or two or three people and then melee it, if that would chain and kill them all. That would be pretty fancy. You know what I could do is I could go try it and then record a little bit uh, before the episode comes out on Monday, tack it on to the end of the show and report back, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start about it next week. It's fine. What's the rush, you know? Enjoy a little mystery. Exactly. Everybody's got everybody's to test it out on their own. We can't give them all the answers. Well, speaking yeah. of that, uh, Joey, like if you've, if you've played Nova Warp and the new Striker a decent amount, has there been any subclasses you're like, itching to get your hands on or that you've played against and you're like, dang, I want to do that. Or what sort of feels powerful that you haven't really messed with? Um, pretty much. I, I've tried, I've tried them all except, um, what's the new void hunter one? What's that one called? Um, oh, slicey slice. Spe <laughs> Spiky <Chop>. boy. <laughs> slicey slice. <laughs> Spectral <laughs> blades. All right. I'll, I'll, yeah, do, the, I'll do the professional. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've heard that the hit registration is a little wonky on that, so I've just kind of steered clear. Mm -hmm. But lately, my um, clanmates have said that if you're in like air, so say you jump before you swipe, I, I hear it connects a lot more consistently, and it's kind of like a actually good super. So I'm I, I want to try that one out and see a combination of um, the invis and the and the super and and see how that see how that plays. Uh, I want to come back to weapons for a little bit. Um, you know, maybe, maybe this can become sort of a uh, uh, a standard question for our, our next round of uh, interviews. But hey, we got random rolls back and a bunch of new <laughs> weapons. And you can't always, I mean, you could always just use snipers, but you don't have to. Um, I'm curious to know, have you gotten any great rolls on guns? Um, either, you know, the big ones everyone knows or some sleepers that are just working well for you. I mean... Aside from so many snipers, what have you been using and, and what role makes you like it? Um, PvE, PvP, or just both? Let's say PvP. Um, or both. I don't know. If right. you fall in love, you fall. <laughs> um, for PvP, I've been getting kind of, um, what's the expression, the short end of the stick? I don't know. Um, I Yeah, I haven't gotten any like any god rolls in that sense, like no spicy devils with outlaw kill clip, none of that. Um, I do have a trust with um, surprisingly explosive payload, and I think it's working hmm. so well because of the stagger that you get on people. Um, hmm. Like when you're when you're in your one v ones, say they have like a Luna's or something. If you're in close range, uh, explosive rounds, I think is just staggering them enough to where they can't hit you as consistently, and I'm able to win those one v ones. So I like explosive rounds. Ironically, not for the damage, but for the flinch aspect. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, there's not really any. Oh man, the PVE weapon that I'm enjoying the most right now is um, uh, Black Talon. That sword is so much fun. It's Ooh. like it's like Dawn Blade, but all the time. Birds, birds, you have something that someone has. <laughs> yeah, I got that one. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> was it like you the, know? Was I... it like the Titan Slam where you weren't really liking it? <laughs> I, uh, you know, you ever like go to the store and like you get a new shirt and then you put it in your closet and like you end up not wearing it for a month. And then when you wear it, you're like, oh, this is great. Why, why did I wait so long? But it's just like, it wasn't the right time yet. Uh, it is hanging up in my closet. It's still got the tags on it. I used oh, it a little bit. Goodness. It was fun, but I, you know, it was fun. I like, I showed the, the missus and she was like, oh, that looks cool. That's a cool. <laughs> so I go, I know, <laughs> right? Cool. Sweet. Yeah. And then I, great. I just, yeah, yeah I, I stooped down to having, I showed my girlfriend all like some 
clips I got of the day. <laughs> she was like, oh, that's that's really cool. Good job. <laughs> oh, you killed three of them with the sniper with a quick skill. Oh, that's yeah, nice, Joey. That's that, that's cool. See that that's amazing. I um what I've found is I, I'll show her clips and like she she can't parse what is going on on the screen. <laughs> it's like there's some everything is flashing, everything's flying around. Was that you who did that? Like who's who's that guy? And it's like, you know what, that's fair. You gotta there's a lot of information on this screen right now. Hey guys, I'm still here. Oh, hi Swain. Uh, oh, hi Swain. hey Swain. Did you did you do the intro today or was that somebody else? I talked a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> did, did Swain, did you fall asleep? I did not fall asleep. I did hear a little yawn. I'm not I'm like I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, but I did hear I a little I just wanted one. to remind you guys I'm here. I'm listening. I'm hanging out. It's like it's like I get to hang out in a podcast I like listening to. Oh, yeah, it's just a live occasionally interrupt, <laughs> and I can jump in and, and throw a wrench and everything. And ask Joey, has he played any Gambit? Oh, I've played an absurd amount of Gambit. Um, Do you like Gambit? I love Gambit. Um, oh, it's my favorite. <laughs> uh, uh, do we want to have the sleeper conversation or we want to just skip past that? <laughs> no, I'm sure everybody knows we're fine. They're changing it up. It's uh you get two, two shots oh, per brick. True. They're messing with the, uh, the generous aim assist on it. Um, these changes are incoming. So, you know, what, what could we say about sleeper? That's not already been said. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, so, so and I, and I understand this is going to be uh, it's going to be dependent. You know, it depends on the situation. But uh, d- I'm curious: Do you have a go to gambit loadout or or set of loadouts that are going to be uh, your 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 standard? I do. Um, I don't know if you guys know, like the I'm sure you do the meatball that would spawn every once in a while. What, what was the official name of the prime evil for malfeasance? I don't remember. Goofy. You know Swain, the meat, you met it. You know the meatball that was spawn and you have to kill it. it. it the <laughs> <laughs> I'm being PG. Swain's okay. over there. <laughs> oh, I saw some hilarious podcast. tweet. Like <laughs> Jada Hawk said something like, "Imagine spending like months creating this uh, in, in, uh, incredible designed, like taken monster, and then for the community to just call it butthole." <laughs> <laughs> Imagine all the yeah. hard work. <laughs> no, um, that's what they were going for. But yeah, so I've played a ton of Gambit, um, searching for that meatball, and my my go to loadout has been I really like this is a recent one, but um fusion rifles or linear fusions besides sleeper, like mm-hmm. uh crooked fang or uh tarantula can surprisingly outplay sleeper because of the quicker charge time. You just have to, you know, get the first shot off. Um, be so that's been peaking. my, yeah, you gotta be better at peaking and cause you can peak so much quicker with that thing. So that's my go-to power. Um, my go-to loadouts for Gambit were, um, I'd usually use a Ace of Spades just for the Firefly perk. Clearing out ads is really nice. Um, the EP shotgun, the EP shotgun is incredible for melting that prime evil. So I'd usually run those two. If before I was running the, um, tarantula, I'd run a sniper in my kinetic and then like a pulse rifle. But once I tried that ace, it just felt very crispy for clearing out those ads initially and then getting the moats and everything like that. I'd like to take a second and point out that Joey took a really long time to realize he uses two of the the most. Yeah, <laughs> it took me so long. It took me so long. I don't know why. Like I, I thought he was going to come and say like, hey, I, I have this... Uh, Listen, this hand can this legendary hand can, and I really love it. He's like, no, nah. <laughs> he's so <serious. laughs> Shush! I played an absurd amount of Gambit, like literally, like a sixteen-hour stream on Monday, trying to get the last meatball for the to get the ship. So I was tired. Um, I would throw on Risk Runner too. Risk Runner could be ridiculous for clearing out ads. I don't know if you guys have done that yet. Um, I like absolutely. using Risk Runner when fallen shows up yeah fallen the, the or easiest to do it if you want a little little cheese um what's i don't know the name of the map but it's i believe it's nessus oh, the one that you can fall into the you can fall in the vex milk and then jump right up and oh. just destroy everything so that's really fun and the super that i use um 
let's see. You think you can guess it? Like what what the best super is for Gambit? It has to do with a thousand knives. It's it's blade barrage. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking reveal. Epic. Shocking reveal. <laughs> Man, that blade super barrage. is it's, again poor Nova Bomb. Poor Nova Bomb, dude. It's like a knife a knife outbeats like a pure Nova explosion, apparently. Yeah. Um we would literally melting point the boss with the Titan and then or a, a Sunbreaker Titan and then two blade barrages and is dead. And like EP shotgun to finish it off. I like that there's sort of like two approaches to Gambit, or at least two directions a game might go. And it's cool that this is how it's developed and I'm excited to see it change. But I feel like there's camps of like, okay, there's one game where people are just going to keep invading back and forth and it'll be like five minutes of healing primevals and everyone just like constantly dying to each other. Or there's the camp of just like, no, 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 no. Like forget what the other team is doing. We're all just going to unleash on this primeval and try to kill it like within 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. And those are two very, very different games. And it's kind of cool how wildly different Gambit games can play out. I, I imagine they're going to want to maybe level it out so games aren't ending with primeval deaths in three seconds or something like that. But for now, it's kind of fun to see. Yeah, I really like the um, the diversity and different strategies that are going into Gambit. Um, I played it at Guardian Con, and it was so much fun. Oh, my goodness. I mean, not only was it like <laughs> a breath of fresh air, you know, like this new crazy right. game mode to play. Um, I think I had like 20 something kills in that. It was stupid. Now it was really weird playing it live too, like in front of other people because you want to like be excited, but then you see them like kind of like put down their controller, just like, Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> they waited in You're line like, for four hours, <laughs> hours to have Joey invade and kill I'm me sorry, but- 15 times. Bungie liked my tweet, so it was worth it. (laughs) (laughs) One thing we talked about with Fallout last week is kind of that opening play, and he's gone through uh, different variations of summoning blockers, of of charging for the the 15-5-5, or we heard um, heard Paris from Gamertag Radio talk about the 10-10-5. Fallout's doing a 5-5-5-5-5 now (laughs) to just try and like... In, you know, optimal. instill chaos for as long as possible leading up to that first invasion. Do you have a set approach or sort of a set kind of set of, you know, jobs within your team or is it just everyone knows what to do? Let's go for it. Yeah, it's kind of my strategy is always kind of the fallout five, 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 five method, you know, like initially just run in there um, and try to block as quick as you can. Like the dream scenario, of course, is when you run in there get your five modes like one person is like designated to get five as quick as they can and then they just go bank so like the first person to get it or whatever and then you go bank and then if they take too long to kill it you're gonna have three more go over like instantly and then <clears throat> if, if you time it perfectly you're gonna have 25 modes when they they have like 30 ready to go and then you just go over and kill them all Super satisfying and yet super deflating on the other side, but that, that's mm-hmm. probably my favorite strategy to go. I, I find that if you're trying to go for 15 in the beginning, you're kind of going to have a bad time because if you take too long and they come over and invade and you lose 15 motes, it's it's not a good feeling. <laughs> not Not a good feeling. For that first invasion, right, you're probably not going to have your super up yet uh, at that time. Um, if you're the one doing the invading, I mean, wh- what's your plan for that first invasion? What's your goal? Um, I recommend the first person going over always gets the power. Um, there's always right around the time <clears throat> at, uh, before you invade, the uh, power block will spawn. So the pr- whoever like wants to invade or whoever's deciding to invade, and that's when you have like a full team, you know, you're able to talk about it. Um, Gambit solo and blueberries is is difficult um uh when you can communicate and say like hey the power's up like oh, okay i'm gonna go grab it and then go over and then right when they bank you have you know four sleeper shots or five whisper shots or whatever um so yeah getting that first brick of power is essential to invading in my opinion swain you still awake i'm here <laughs> 
Okay, well, I know I, I just I have to pull us away from Gambit because we've talked about it a lot on this show in the last couple weeks. You shut your mouth, it's great. <laughs> Swain, I, we still haven't played Swain. Carry me in Gambit. <laughs> well, that can happen. I'm not opposed to that happening. <laughs> but Joey, have you uh, have you messed with comp at all? Have you have you dipped your toes into the competitive playlist now that Giles is in here? Uh, and if so, do you have any thoughts? I have dipped my toes into uh, the competitive scene. Um, I really like it. I think it's a, a big improvement from last season, um, being just um, survival and countdown. It, it kind it felt kind of slow, you know, and mm-hmm. especially <clears throat> when you're grinding for Luna's Howl, um, <laughs> you get a countdown match, and you're just oh, because you're gonna get like <laughs> three hand cannon kills or whatever step you're on. Um, but yeah, I I t- I spent a lot of time the first couple weeks um grinding for the PvE side and I've just started to to hop in and um grind out some of that. I've had a lot of fun solo queuing actually um up until I think it's Mythic or or 2100, I'm not sure what the the title is. Mm-hmm. I hear that's like right when it starts to get super sweaty and you're going to want to get a team to grind for not forgotten if you're going for that. And it <laughs> it sucked though cuz I did the PVE grind super quick and then like um rhythm and all my other buddies just instantly went into <laughs> PvP. So when I got around to like grinding for my Luna, I was like, all right guys, let's do this. And I have like zero glory and then they have fifty five hundred. So we're just matching the greatest <laughs> destiny players in the universe. Like, guys, I just want some easy games. I just need like I need solar kills and there's like amazing people in this game. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've, I've had fun solo queuing for the most part. All right. Well, I've got a, I've got one, well, I'll say one last question. I think, I think we've covered the bases with forsaken. We've had a fair number of new, uh, new exotics drop and, you know, we're, we're getting them bit by bit. Um, you mentioned that malfeasance grind and of course, ace of spades got to have it. Everyone loves it. Um, I'm curious if there's any other exotic weapons that you've had dropped so far, uh, what you think, what you like, and if you think there's uh, there's any out there that, that folks are still sleeping on. Um, we talked a little bit about the the one you got in the closet that you haven't taken the tags off of. Yep, um, fun sword. Like Talon's been my my go to or my my favorite one so far. <clears throat> I did get Lord of Wolves to drop, and it's it's fun. I like it. Um, uh, I have a wish. I got thousand voices, but I have been unlucky so far in getting that. I can tell you, it's not fun to die to that thing. Um, yeah. No, it is I, not. <laughs> I, I I will say there's very few things in Destiny where I've just blatantly like started laughing out loud, and one of them was the time <laughs> where I was um, we matched we matched um, Pure Chill and uh, ZK Mushroom and all those guys in in comp and. Uh, freaking ZK had a thousand voices and we were on eternity. Okay. Eternity. He was, we were outside temple. Um, he was on the right side bridge, like the little, (laughs) and Ryan was all the way over by patio, like almost in spawn. And ZK just like fired up one of those 1000 voices, kind of did like a zigzag and like a tiny little bit touched Ryan's foot and he just (laughs) blew up (laughs) from so far away. Oh boy. Oh man. Yeah. So that one looks really fun. I can't wait to get that one. Um Queen Breakers, I've been lucky to get that one either, but I've heard and experienced as well that that is incredible in Gambit. Might actually kind of top um Sleeper or, or uh yeah, Sleeper because of the quicker charge time with possibly even better um aim assist. I'm not sure. I don't know the stats, but all I know is I've gotten destroyed and gambit by that thing. Um, oh yeah, it, it so, is. So it's nuts. Do you have one? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those are probably the the three I want. I want the most. Service just looks fun. It's it's really good for shredding stuff. I don't have one yet though. I've I I haven't been getting very good luck with the with the exotics, but it's that's a good thing in my opinion. I I, I like. I like the sense that you you can't get everything, and the 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 couple things you are gonna get, you know, they're gonna be somewhat unique to you. You know, you're gonna um, enjoy the the unique aspect of that 
certain weapon and with Bungie implementing the um duplicate um I don't, I don't know oh the, yeah what's the, what's the phrase it's like like that protection thing duplicate protection yeah that'll be nice too so you won't keep getting telesto like I keep getting <laughs> yeah. uh maybe the problem is that you're just not playing enough destiny thought about <laughs> yeah. that yeah that's possibly it you're trying to kill him birds <laughs> <laughs> All part of my plan. So, <laughs> boldness, 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 boldness. Well, boldness, boldness, it's been a blast having you here. Uh, where can our listeners find you? Um, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Joe Overrated. It's just spelled J and then overrated. Um, I stream, I, tr- I try to aim for five days a week. Usually ends at four days a week, but do a lot of um, PvP nonsense over there. Uh, did a lot of trials. Hopefully, oh, I can't wait for the new trials. I think they're going to blow it out of the park. Um, but yeah, Twitter, Joe Overrated, YouTube, Joe Overrated, all that jazz. Really appreciate you guys having me on again. It was fun. Of course, bud. I missed you guys. Back. Can't wait for next oh. Guardian Con. Well, we did mm. it, guys. We made it to the end of the episode in the exact Whoa. amount of time that the length of this episode is. That's how long it took us to do this. It's amazing how we perfectly hit our target time every single week. We pick that. Yeah. This one's going to be 67 minutes and 29 seconds after editing. And um, yeah, somehow we just nail it week after week. We never announce it in advance. That was just a hypothetical number. I'm not going to tell you the secret number we picked for this one. Um, Yeah. And uh, at our 200th episode, we're going to release a uh, master mix of all dead air that's cut out of the show. (laughs) So, I mean, there'll be, like, casual jokes, maybe some grunts, maybe no, some man, snoring. I, liked, I like that shader. It looks really good on my, on my oh, gambit. See, he's so. already, he's already oh. out. We Is there a way we can, we can steer Sleepy Swain towards, towards plugs? I don't, like, I don't know. Does he have some sort of, like, you know, can we trigger something in his brain that will make him plug the website? How about this? He's been a, a hard miss every time we threw to him. Uh... Swain, uh, I know you like to cook. What have you been cooking recently? Um, I think you should go to cruiselaredo.com. It has all your solutions for stuff like that. That's it. Somehow yeah, we yeah. won and yeah. lost at the same time. <laughs> now people are going to be mad that we don't have cooking advice on our website. Uh. Yeah, well, we got some other stuff there. Hey, we got some. Uh, we got some shirts. Go get a shirt. Go get a hat. Cover up your disgusting head. <laughs> Uh, Let's wrap this one up. I'm going to go eat some french fries. Bye-bye, uggos. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't stop. Not you. Not you, of course. (laughs) Everyone else who's listening, you're beautiful. Hello everyone, Swain here. You know that Crucible Radio is your source for all things Destiny PvP, and I know you want more than just this video, so make sure to head on over to crucibleradio.com to find all of our past episodes, detailed Crucible maps, t-shirts, and much, much more.